I bought a big old box of wooden mushrooms and I'm gonna paint them. Some will be mushroomy, some will be lampy. If you don't know what that means, just wait. I'll show you. Here it is. <laughs> you can tell there's a lot of mushrooms in there. This set actually came with some brushes. That one's a little special. They're not really the highest quality, but they did come with some vocabulary on the back, which was actually some stuff I didn't know. And I'm also not entirely sure if it's accurate, but <laughs> here's the main attraction. We actually have 42 wooden mushrooms to play with. We've got these two tall pointy shrooms. This one actually has a crack and <laughs> I love him. There's these two tall round fungi. At least I assume they're fun. I haven't actually gotten to know them yet. We got two chunky toadstools table lamps, two slightly taller chunky toadstool table lamps. There's also four of these rowdy teenage spores. Oh, they're so cute. Ugh, bomb. We also have these 10 pointy little children and 10 of the round twuffles. Truffles. <laughs> they're just so cute. And that's it, which is good because I think I've run out of different ways to say mushroom. I think my personal favorite is the little witch hat ones. They just look the least like a table lamp to me, you know? Oh, also pay no mind to my wound. Um, some reason I thought like the back of my hand was like a remotely convenient place to put down my iron. To clarify, I was very wrong. Oh, and then my other fingers actually read from slicing strawberries, which were delicious. Anyway, since I can't decide which shroom to paint first, I think I'll take this time to assemble the necessary supplies that we will need, like paint. Oh, <laughs> look at me trying desperately to keep them all upright. How optimistic I was. I also grabbed my metallic paints, you know, just in case. Of course, I have my dirty palette. <laughs> if you are expecting something more aesthetic than a uh, turd smudges, hi, you must be new. Welcome to the channel. Water, of course. And don't forget your paper towel. So the first mushroom I decided to paint was one of our little teenagers. He's not too big, not too small. He's kind of like, you know, right in the middle. Guess what color I painted that? I'll give you a couple seconds. Red! <laughs> <laughs> you know, like mushrooms. I did end up um, deciding to use the brushes that came with the set, you know, for science <laughs> and convenience, even though this one did require a little bit of a haircut, but now he's a brand new man. He's feeling fresh. So yeah, <laughs> I started with the classic red toadstool. There's a reason it's classic, you know, it's just beautiful. And like someone I'm sure has said at some point, to exaggerate life, you have to first imitate life. I don't know. At this point, I looked at a reference and realized like the cutest of the red mushrooms have a slight gradient of like orange near the bottom edge. So I added that to mine and after blending it out, it, <laughs> you couldn't really see it, but I do exaggerate that later. Figured the next step would be to paint little dots. So I actually dumped a bunch of titanium white paint on my palette, but I decided uh, I should probably wait for it to dry first. You know, the red stuff. So I set the red shroom aside for now and I grabbed this bigger, bulkier fungus. I had a very particular idea in mind with this one and I was gonna need a lot of blue to do it, specifically a light sky blue. So I basically just poured a bunch of white paint right on top of the blue to really get the party started. Yeah, so there it is, mixing it. We have a drawing with Wobbles exclusive. We are going live on the scene to hear her reaction as she painted the mushroom sky blue. Ooh. Ooh. Mushrooms are kind of convenient to paint actually because like they literally have handles. I didn't think about this. There's a place to put your hand. I really wanted to paint the little white dots on the reddish orangey one, but it like still wasn't dry. So then I set them both aside and I grabbed the biggest mushroom we've got. Look at this thing. Look at them. I had another specific idea for this one, which I'm gonna keep my secret, but I originally was going to put washi tape on top, but I decided I needed to paint it completely white first. Remember when I said it was like convenient that the mushrooms had handles? <laughs> that gets thrown completely out the window when you realize you need to, I don't know, paint the handle? Where are you supposed to put your hand then? This is when I realized just how convenient it is to have long nails. I'm a genius. Then I put it down and just kind of painted the leftover bit. So now we have, we've painted a total of three mushrooms and completed a grand total of zero. <laughs> what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna try and throw some yellow on this red shroom and see if I can't exaggerate that gradient even more. So I'm basically dabbing bits on the edge with a small brush. And then I grabbed a larger, slightly damp brush and feathered it upwards towards the top of the mushroom. And um, now you can't see it anymore. <laughs> Great. I did grab some white and yellow paint and I mixed that together and painted the underside and the handle with about as much grace as I could possibly muster in this circumstance. <gasps> what? 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 
that's kind of a problem. Even though there were obviously going to be little white spots on top of the red mushroom eventually, I chose to go the extra mile and retouch the top, you know, for that quality and professionalism which you've come to expect on this channel. Jumping back to the blue mushroom, I got out my nail art brushes specifically for this little dotting tool. And I basically just dipped that in the paint and began painting little white clouds all over this round blob. <laughs> in theory, these were to imitate the white dots on like, you know, a realistic mushroom, but obviously they're like more fun and surreal. Maybe because I jumped the gun and did this before I'd even completed the red mushroom, <laughs> but I didn't really implement it in the most imitating a mushroom sort of way. I don't know. He looks like a lamp. So while I didn't love how it was going, I didn't give up. I just, you know, put it aside for a little while while I jump back into the red shroom. I grabbed that same dotting tool and this time using a reference of an actual mushroom, I started adding the dots to which I literally, I just realized, wait, that's like called the cap of the mushroom, right? The like rounded part. You know, why don't we have a little mushroom anatomy lesson so we can all, mostly me, know what we're talking about. So essentially all of these wooden mushrooms in this set specifically have these three specific three-dimensional features. There's the top of the mushroom and this is called the cap probably because it looks like a little hat. Good thing I don't name things. <laughs> then there's the underside of the cap which is where the gills would be and then the handle is actually called the, the stalk. The little white dots that I keep talking about, those are actually called scales. There's a lot more to mushrooms, but that's all that I can really visually imitate with these wooden mushrooms in this set, so. Okay, back to the video. What were we doing? Oh, we're painting the white scales on the cap of this red mushroom. Don't I sound so much more informed now? I also ended up repainting the stalk, like a pinkier color to kind of match the red a little better. And that one was done, finally. <laughs> we finished a mushroom. Now I'll just let it dry undisturbed where nothing will destroy it in the corner there. I quickly added a second coat of white paint to the white mushroom because the, the first coat just wasn't enough. <laughs> but my paper had yellow on it. Make sure you clean your paintbrushes, folks, so you don't have to redo it like me. While the big white mushroom continues to dry, I grabbed a tiny pointed cap mushroom and I actually painted it blue on the top, but with a gradient this time. I figured the sky one would have looked better with a gradient, so that's kind of what I was like testing out with this little mini guy. I started painting another mid-sized mushroom's cap that's very light blue. I think I meant it to be white, but we'll see later. I mean, it's gotta dry anyway. <laughs> now you can see how chaotic my workflow is. Wow, nice deep dive. I think the scales, which are represented with the clouds here, they're just too uniform. Like they should have only been at the top of the cap, you know, like to imitate the real mushroom. Like I'm only realizing this now, but at the time I tried to solve my dislike for it by painting the stock blue. How was that gonna help? I don't know. Now it's just a big blue mushroom with clouds on it. Yep, look, I was right. I did paint that one white. <laughs> this was another one of my like really fun idea ones, which you'll see in a minute. But I grabbed one of the tall rounded cat mushrooms and I painted this one pretty, I don't know, like kind of like a nude pink color. This is one of the ideas that I was like the most excited for. So you'll see. I actually painted the entire thing, not just the cap, but the stock as well, this color. <laughs> it really takes me a lot of energy not to call that a handle. Oh, let's see how dedicated I am. Now our little red toadstool was dry and officially complete here. Give him a little showcase, you know, before putting him over in the corner where he's safe. Honestly, I loved him so much I had to celebrate and I painted a little mini uh, pointed cat mushroom so I could have a mini version. Okay, back to Sky Shroom. <sighs> In the moment, I was still feeling very mad about it, but I had a new plan. Add green. <laughs> Made like a like grass green color, and then I added some nice, you know, gateway desktop hills for the bottom half of the stalk. Not sure how I thought that would solve the uh, problem. And uh, finding a way to let that dry without getting paint everywhere was also a task. Day. Come on. Thank you. Since the big white shroom still wasn't dry, I grabbed my favorite shroom and I was about to color it my favorite color. Purple! I said purple. Okay, better. But like, you know, my favorite purple, so much better. I actually did find some use for that darker purple though. I added in gradients along the bottom half of the cap as well as the underside. I really loved this texture when I held the oval flat brush sideways and I kind of just flicked 
upwards. I just really like this one. It's fun and surreal, but not, you know, unmushroomy. But anyway, set that aside to dry. The big white mushroom is back. This time I still have no idea how I'm, you know, gonna make my idea come across, which I'll tell you right now. My idea is a checkerboard, right? Like, how do you paint checkerboards? At first I thought maybe I could sketch it, you know, with a pencil, but I quickly changed my mind because I was having a very hard time erasing. So then I went back to the washi tape idea and I got pretty far with this. It had its share of struggles, seeing as the mushroom is not flat. That would have been convenient, but I figured something out and <laughs> kind of just started adding in black paint to the open areas that were not currently covered in washi tape. Then I removed the tape and I kind of just realized how unnecessary this all was. Like it worked, but it also didn't. <laughs> I ended up basically with the soccer ball. I, I, I stuck with it. I added in like the other half of the black squares. And then this kind of worked for the most part. The problem was like the two kind of ends of the rounded part. Like I could go across one direction, but then the other direction we had some issues. There just physically wasn't enough space for all the squares I needed without them like getting ridiculously smaller. I tried a lot of different things. Um, I even started over a couple times <laughs> and I didn't capture the on camera because I needed less pressure. <laughs> but here it is after some serious TLC. Ay, ay, ay. Caramba. Back to the purple, awesomely adorable, turning out so well mushroom. I decided to actually add in the gills. I did this by using a thin brush. Ooh. Taking an even thinner brush, <laughs> I painted lines from basically the stalk to the end of the cap to create the illusion of that gill texture. Then I used the dotting tool again to give the purple mushroom some scales at the little tip of the pointed cap. And that brings us to two complete mushrooms. At this point, I was getting a little sick of looking at the sky one with displeasure. <laughs> so I decided to finish it once and for all. Probably need a paintbrush for that. And I ended up painting the whole stalk green. I was kind of hoping this would bring it more to the realm of mushrooms since like red mushroom has a different colored stock, right? So if it's a sky mushroom, maybe green would be a good color for the stock. And it would kind of make it look less like a simple landscape painted on an oddly shaped piece of wood. I don't think it helped it stopping from looking like a children's lamp, but that was it for me. <laughs> I got other things to do with my life, you know like Mr. Checkerboard here. My idea for this one was to have the stock be a rainbow. Uh, I don't know, I just had this vision in my head and I, I stuck it through, let me tell you. It didn't really look like this. I mean, in my head it was a version of this. It was just like a better version, but not like this. <laughs> this one's really reaching peak lampdom. Like, why did I think this would look like a mushroom at all? Well, I, I mean, actually, I do know why. Basically, I interpreted the cap of the mushroom to be red with white spots, right? Like, that's like my idea of a mushroom. So that's a pattern, right? What else is a pattern? Checkerboard. And then I had the idea with the clouds. It was a similar concept. What I forgot to implement was any form or hint of like the real deal. I assumed the shape of a mushroom would do that enough for me. And maybe it would have if these were all like the pointed cap mushroom shape, but I don't know. I still don't think so because let's be real. These all kind of look like lamps from a dollhouse. Like if I told you they were, you'd believe me. <laughs> so if I don't end up painting them exactly like a mushroom, in my opinion, they just look like lamps. But just wait, I'm not done with this. So it looks like a little bit of a mess right now, but we come back to it. And like I said, in the moment of painting these, I hadn't made these connections in my head of like why it wasn't working. I jumped back onto the tall pink mushroom and you can kind of see with this one how what I just described is implemented here as well. <laughs> the same flaws, but it still turned out cute. I'm using some gold paint and the dotting tool first to add a little dot onto the cap. And then I switched to a small brush and added little petals around the gold dot. Yep, it's a floral design with gold. <laughs> I love it. It was really tricky getting the petals right, making sure there were like a good amount of petals without them looking too uniform. What ended up actually working best was going back to the dotting tool and placing it like the furthest from the center dot and dragging it towards it. Unfortunately, <laughs> the camera was blown out from the sun. 
But if it wasn't, or if I were to happen to notice this was the case, it would look like this. A little quick ISO adjustment. Now you can see all the petals. Once the design on the top was done, I actually colored the stalk a slightly different color just to incorporate a little bit more of that mushroom vibe. So I was starting to pick up on some things, like a slightly different color stem kind of helps, you know, but I just wasn't quite there yet. If you can't tell by the different lighting, the dryer palette and the semi cleaner hands, I took a little break. I just Decided the design didn't stand out enough, so I ended up darkening some of the colors, especially the purple flowers. Okay, all right, let's jump back to the Barbie lamp. I mean, mushroom. Oh wait, it's not Barbie's lamp or a mushroom. It's a cow mushroom. Found mostly in open pastures. These fungi are known for their creamy consistency and sweet flavor. Some people find them off-putting because of their bile-like smell that can travel for miles. I made that all up. <laughs> But yes, added some nice cow texture all over. These were really fun to paint. <laughs> They're like all blobby and contrasty. Like you can't get more contrast than black. Also, I painted the stock pink. It's supposed to look like udders. <laughs> yup. All right, now let's jump back to the mushroom of Tumblr blog's past. I decided to try and see if maybe pastel rainbows would look better. Not only would it potentially, you know, be cuter, but adding white to colors usually makes them far more opaque, which was gonna solve quite a few problems with this mushroom, hopefully in one go, which I believe it did. Like it's so much better. It's still not my style or my vibe at all, but better. Then I gave our floral mushroom a little underbelly makeover. And no, that's 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 not Kirby. That's my head in a hat, just to clarify. Since I like the gold so much, I added some little gold dots, you know, just for the absolute heck of it. And when that was done, I, I really liked this one. It's very lampy, but you know, it's pretty lampy mushroom. You know, I'm okay that it looks like a lamp because it also just looks so cute. This next one might be up there with like the biggest fails of the video because I, I literally didn't even end up doing my pl original plan. But first I painted it gray. Then my plan was to glue these high luster gems and then make it, you know, like super blingy. <laughs> Huge problem. They were not the shape I thought they were at all. They're literally little plastic diamonds. <laughs> so yeah, that, that didn't work. I ended up painting the entire cap with this metallic gray just because, I don't know, somehow I thought that was a good trade off. But it is very shiny and I like that about it. At this point, I was... <laughs> fairly underwhelmed by my creative ideas for the mushrooms, we'll say. But I couldn't leave old Chip behind. So I wanted to paint this one a bit more, let's just say mushroomy and just kind of really enjoy it, right? So I just did the same thing with this other one, painted them both pink. I tried to imitate my favorite mushroom, you know, that one just barely out of frame, but on a round shroom. So I gradiated, <laughs> is that a word? Gradiated from dark pink to light pink, working my way up the cap from the stock. And of course, adding in the little white scales, concentrating them mostly in the topmost center part of the cap, which I'm learning is what they usually look about like. Mm. And I also did the same thing with the metallic toad sudul there. For Chip, I really thought maybe I could get away with making it look like Chip from Beauty and the Beast. And at first I kind of tried, but I chickened out and I just painted the whole thing pastel pink, which I don't regret. And I also added in a darker gradient at the bottom, blending it upwards because that's just my favorite mushrooms look that way so I was gonna stick with it oh <laughs> and here's a laugh do you know how at the time I wasn't sure what was wrong with some of these mushrooms and why they were looking like lamps well some reason I thought I could add a gloss varnish to them and it would help a gloss varnish you know what can be glossy lamps you know what is never glossy mushrooms but this lapse of judgment is so uncharacteristically absurd i i have no excuses no excuses anyway to spoil it for you this did not work probably made it worse luckily i only did it um on the cow lamp and the checkerboard lamp, which were the two worst offenders. It shows you that I thought it was going to help. Yeah, they're they're dollhouse lamps now. I'm not going back. I'm not calling them mushrooms anymore. <laughs> Even I, master of dumb ideas, realized this was a mistake at two and stopped, okay? But to comfort myself, because I was feeling a little stupid at the time, I painted the rest of the mushrooms, just single colors, nice and simple. You know, making them look like mushrooms, but rainbow colors, like simple ideas, little out there, but simple, you know? But boy, does it work and look good. <laughs> Beautiful. So I basically just used up the remainder of my pastel colors like blue, purple, yellow, orange, red, 
green. Didn't really care for the yellow, so I ended up making it a bit more vibrant. But by now, my big pointed mushroom was dry. So I grabbed it and uh, added in the little scales. Doesn't it just pull it all together? Love it. And some of these mushrooms are a little um, top heavy. Oh, it's a little dirty now. Luckily, I literally just painted this one. So the paint was all still wet on the palette and I didn't have to try and remix the color. So I could just like blob it on there and it was very easily remedied. Hmm. Now I'm adding the scales to our big pink pointed cap mushroom. Doesn't it just pull it all together so much better? And I love that crack. <laughs> All right, then I just had to add all the dots to my little shroom children. The red one, the blue one, the purple, little green, little orange, red again, purple again. They're all out. But look at them. Look at all my mushrooms. Let's do like a little quick recap. We got this one. It's still one of my favorites, even though there's like, you know, nothing original about it. It's just, it's just nice. It doesn't try to be anything it's not. With these, I like the littler one better. I feel like it just kind of mixes some of what I didn't like. And it's just more mushroomy shaped overall, which helps. And I kept the clouds like high up on it and make them look like scales. I don't know. It just looks less like a lamp in my opinion. Maybe I could have made the cloud dots more dotty. Anyway, there's those two. And then, then my favorite mushroom. Love the color. I love the blocky gradient down the cap. Mwah. This one, I do not like. It's just not my style. Adding the shimmer obviously was not helpful. <laughs> Little pink pudgy shroom. Tried to recreate the purple texture, but it worked better on the purple one. <laughs> but it turned out a little bit better on this one. And I just, I just love the crack. Yeah, I feel like I thought it was gonna pull away from mushroom, but it actually helps because sometimes mushrooms crack. Well, I don't know if you'd call it cracking you know, they split. <laughs> oh, look, they're friends. Just realized I didn't make a tiny pink shroom. So that's a travesty I need to rectify immediately. So I made a rounded and a pointed one, of course. Look at the little minis. The camera might not like this one, but I do. It looks really good IRL and you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Or I suppose I could film a clip in the morning. If I did, it would look like this. <laughs> okay, and then we have the cow lamp. I don't see any need to call it a mushroom. Maybe if I'd only put the cow print at the top, you know, like the scales, it would have earned that title, but this is how it ended up. Let me just add some quick dots on our little pink minis, which actually brings us a whole rainbow of mini baby mushrooms. They're so cute. And they work together so nicely. If for some reason you're wondering how many mushrooms I actually painted, this is all I have left. So what, I painted 37 mushrooms mushrooms in one day yeah and here is my collection of all my mushrooms and a couple lamps even after putting in a lot of fail time into this i'm kind of interested and some quite a bit inspired in trying this again but like all of the knowledge that i feel like i have gained about like the difference between table lamps floor lamps differences between lamps and mushrooms <laughs> but if i don't end up doing that i hope you do go forth with the knowledge so that you don't have to suffer like i did <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys for watching and coming along with me as I painted a bunch of mushrooms and a couple table lamps. And I'll see you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening. Follow for a push. Bye.